Today we want to explain to you the specific functions of one of our oldest jumping saddle models. It's the close contact jumping. Therefore we present you a horse with a lot of thoroughbred influence, which was the base of the construction of this saddle. So what you see here is a slopey top line with quite extreme lines. Huh? You have a long prominence of spines. You have a falling line to here and then a rising line to the top line, uh, to the croup. You see a distance between shoulder blade and deepest point, which is quite long. The Amerigo philosophy is that we want to support the stretch between middle of the back and middle of the neck by the construction of our saddles. Therefore, we have one key distance, which is the one from shoulder blade, just behind will be the, the gullet placed. Then we have this distance to the deepest point of the top line, and then we have, you need a moderate rise, rising angle in the saddle, not to interfere with the hind leg of the horse. Horses can carry a lot of weight easily at the base of the wheels. This is where we wanna get with the rider's weight. If we stick the saddle on top, you see the point of the tree. You go up to the pommel, then you get this distance, which corresponds with the distance between shoulder blade and deepest point of the top line. Also, what you see here is a very moderate rising angle to the croup, which doesn't interfere with the hind leg. For the positioning of the rider, we want to achieve a position as you would stand on the ground. That means the hips are placed upright, so you achieve a balance line between ear, shoulder, hip, heel. What you also see is that we usually make three, four, uh, point, uh, four billets on jumping saddles. This allows us to adjust to the position of the girth, which is, which is given by the horse on the sternum, which, which is called the girth depth. What we want to achieve is a straight line to the first buckle of the girth. So if we achieve that, we have distances, angles, and fixation under control.